everybody. I'm Samya Nanjapa, nutritionist with IOH. Today we have Jay Kumar with us to share his experience of his lifestyle transformation journey. Uh, a little bit about Jay. Jay is a CEO and chief coach at Blue Fire Coaching Consultants. He is an executive coach, keynote speaker, and an author with clients across India, Southeast Asia, China, and the US. We must say his experience with clients span across multiple industries. Uh, Jay came to us uh, in 2020 during the lockdown uh, to start his transformational journey, okay? And um, he lost about 10 kgs. He definitely looks good now, okay? And uh, he's, he's definitely a motivation to a lot of people in his circle, okay? Hi, Jay, welcome. Hey, Samia, happy to be here. <laughs> happy to see you too <laughs> okay so we're gonna dive straight in okay uh, so okay i'm gonna go ahead with my first question okay what were the major challenges you have faced during your transformation uh you know say for most it is usually their taste buds or the food culture you know at home and workplace what were your challenges uh, that you can that you came across um, I'll, I'll have to step back a little because it's not like something that I've struggled with only off late. About, about eight or nine years ago, I, I lost a good amount of weight because I used to run. And uh, it was beautiful. I, I was staying in uh, Bombay at that time and I used to run around Shivaji Park and I'd gotten addicted to the runner's high. Um, um, uh, it was beautiful. It was a great experience. Uh, I, knew. I was there sometime back too. <laughs> uh -huh, okay, nice. And, um, uh, you know, I, I would go for a run in the evening and I clocked up to about 12 to 13 kilometers on a regular basis. I was planning to run the uh, half marathon that, that year, but I have a debilitating knee injury that's uh, red, left over from my college basketball days. And okay. uh, that's been, that, that was troubling me quite a bit. So then I had to stop running and uh, subsequent to that, then weight slowly started adding on, adding on. So weight, gaining weight and losing fitness is, is very, uh, you know, the best metaphor I can think about is if you suddenly throw a frog in a boiling water, it will jump out because the water is too hot. But if you put the frog in a bowl of water and gradually heat it, the frog doesn't realize and it just gets used to the new temperature of the water. Even, you know, so gaining weight and losing fitness is pretty much like that. We kind of lose track about, you know, when did I put on weight? You know, it's all those incremental, incremental little, little bits and bits. Oh my so, God. So relatable. So relatable. <laughs> I just see you talking about me. <laughs> I'm talking about everybody who's on the yes. journey, you know. And, um, and, you know, for me, the problem used to be that I would start off and I, I call this the magical Monday and the first day of gym kind of a phenomenon. You start up, you go buy the latest ingredients, you, I've done everything, I've done smoothies, I've been on a cleanse fast, uh, you know, so many things. But unfortunately for me, what started happening was if there was a break, because I used to travel quite a bit, if there was a break, it would be very difficult for me to get back to the earlier uh, this thing. And many people think that, uh, you know, motivation or white knuckling is the best way to go through it. Where's your willpower? Where's your motivation? Uh, and I tell them, you know, boss, motivation is like having a bath. You have to do it every day. It's not like one magic pill and then suddenly you, you transform. And I was looking at, see, there are two fundamental challenges that anybody who wants to get fit faces. A, there is a huge amount of information available, but... How do you make sense of that information? That's the that's a huge challenge. And number two is to get into the to, to build a habit, to be consistent with it, and to go through when you don't see immediate results. These are two fundamental challenges that faces everybody. Okay. And uh, it was pretty similar with me as well. Okay. And yeah. Uh, lock, can... Lockdown saw me add on a lot of pounds because we all we, we were all there together. So much of uncertainty in the air, and you're at home, and there's not too much to do, and you end up, you know, chowing down a lot of unhealthy food. And, yeah. Um, Tell me about it. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I put on. Uh, I was I was very sluggish. I was not I was not in the best shape. 
and which is when I reached out to Regina and I was waiting. To, so I have a lot of coaches and I, and I keep telling people as a coach, I firmly believe in the fact that you need to have a coach. Um, I have a fitness coach, I have a nutritionist, I have two fitness coaches and so on. And the whole idea is when you, when you trust the coach, when, when there is that relationship and when there is that rapport, which is what I enjoyed with Regina, apart from the yarn, the yarn you can get from anybody, right? But a little bit of building blocks, a little bit of encouragement and the daily tracking kind of a mechanism, uh, that really made a huge difference. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Uh, so my next question is in uh, two parts. And I think mostly you said a line or two already about it. Uh, the first part is what was your motivation to stick on to the lifestyle change? Okay, see, when it comes to me, for me, when I see uh, uh, my weighing, I, I read my weighing scale, uh, uh, you know, measurements every day. My weight check happens every day. And literally, my diet gets structured on those lines. <laughs> okay, it feels good to see the weight and it feels good to see those grams go down. And uh, being with IOH, I've also seen, uh, you know, so many clients who say for them, uh, you know, the visual changes. Uh, you know, the first month, they actually see some changes and they literally fit into clothes that they were not fitting into. You know, all these are the aspects that, uh, you know, that help motivate to continue. Okay, so that is one part, what motivates you uh, to stay. And the second part of it is, uh, apart from the weighing scale, uh, the reading and your physical appearance, what have you observed as changes in you? Uh, it could be your sleep pattern, your stress levels, it can be your endurance, your cognitive uh, performance. What did you see? Uh, excellent. Uh, talking about motivation, I can, I can spend the next uh, one day talking about... Uh, uh, so I, I keep telling uh, my coaches, right? We all have combination locks uh, and we're all walking around with combination locks. Okay. Um, the combination lock that works for you doesn't have to work for me. What works for me doesn't have to work for somebody. We all have our unique combination locks. And for me, it was an exercise in figuring out what my unique combination lock was. And I okay. have to tell you a couple of psych, and, and I've told Regina this a lot of times, the okay. psychological aspect of uh, focus and commitment and consistency is as important as the, as the actual action of eating right and working out. Because most of the battle that we have is between our ears, right? It, it happens in our brain. Oh, let me sleep on Monday. What happens if I you know, miss my workout today? It's, it's, a, it's a constant internal dialogue that's going on. In our brain. And so much stress and so much stress thinking about it. Oh. Of course. And then we always have this very helpful friend who drops in and says, oh, forget it. Let's party tonight. You don't have to work out tomorrow. So, you know, it comes in all shapes and uh, forms. For me, the idea was I decided to do two very, very simple things. One, okay. I would always keep my workout gear ready for my morning workout in the previous evening, every single day, every okay. single day. And you will not believe how much that helped me because I don't have to think. The minute I think, I'll go back to bed. I don't have to think. Wow. Okay. And, and, and I have a fitness, you know, I, you know, she's amazing. I have another fitness trainer in the evening. He's also great. But the reason for me having a fitness trainer is because I don't want to think. I don't want to, I don't want to dissipate my energy into making decisions. Oh, now I've done the, the bubble. Now I should do the weights. I will just go there and I, as a clean slate, I will do what you ask me to do and I'll do to the best of my ability. So I've removed the friction. There is no, there is no friction in getting out of bed and, you know, getting into your gear and start working out. Number one. And number two, um, I started sending my workout snaps and my videos to a friend of mine in Singapore. And I told she, she's like a huge fitness freak. She's 70 years okay. old. She's amazingly fit. She's like a huge inspiration. And I, told her, and I told her, listen, you don't have to say anything. You don't have, even have to say good job. I'm just sending it to you. You will be my accountability partner. And we need an accountability partner who will not judge us negatively. Oh, one month you worked out, I can't see any improvement. We don't need it. We need all the help we can get, even if it is fake enthusiasm. Um, so that really helped. So these two things are some things that I realized was helping me, you know, keep on track. 
Um, as far as, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I take that, I'll take that because uh, it's, it's totally different from the way I think. So it's it's a beautiful point. I will I will make note of that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so just like you, I I weigh myself every day. There are different schools of thought. Some people say don't weigh yourself every day, but yeah. I, I'm just like thinking what works best for me. And uh, even with Regina, I told her I'm going to WhatsApp you images and I'm going to send it across to you. Uh, the second bit of it is knowledge about nutrition. We are woefully inadequate. Our we don't have enough knowledge on what is great sustenance for our body, what works for my body, where do I draw my energy from? And that's a huge gap that, uh, you know, Regina with Invest on Health has managed to create. And I'm so happy that, uh, you know, that there is a huge amount of traction about this. I, I remember I was talking to the CEO of a, of a company based out of China, and uh, he said, there's a huge round of fitness that's happening in China. People are doing Tai Chi, they do yoga, they're drinking, you know, herbal smoothies and, you know, whatnot. And I think we are getting there. I think yeah, we, are, yeah, we are definitely getting there. Yes. You know, in a way, thanks to COVID, we're getting a little more in touch with us and saying that, hey, listen, you know, you better take care of yourself <laughs> um, so that your body can fight against the infection. Your body is in the best position possible to combat uh, all these things. Those little by little improvements, right? One is intentionality. I was very intentional about the fact that I'm going to work out tomorrow and hence my stuff, everything is ready, number one. Number two, um, I've reduced the friction as much as possible about decision making. I'm saying clean slate, just go there, do it. Uh, results will come. Okay. And number three, very, very important, which I found really fascinating was what happens after I reach my target? Will I just stop? Or should I just stop? That's that's the most stupidest kind of thinking that somebody has. And I realized this, I was watching a, a Joe Rogan uh, interview and uh, somebody asked him like, how, how much do you work out? He says, I work out for an hour hours. And he says, don't you miss workout days and stuff like that. He said, very simple stuff, but it hit me really hard. He said, I don't forget to take a bath. I don't forget to have food. So I don't forget to work out. So that's when I realized this is consistency. It's for life. It's not a makeshift. It's not like an in-between thing. Oh, when I touch this, I'll stop. No, that's, that's ridiculous. So, you know, so many people such as, you know, they start these lifestyle changes, uh, you know, the transformational journeys, all these get started, but uh, many of them are not able to sustain this lifestyle for a long time. Okay, when it starts off, it is a motivation in itself. So it That's is. Your <laughs> no, because for me, I, if I, even when I start, this is what happens. I end up at some point, you know, saying, okay, today I'll take a break. You know, I'm going to take a break for two days. That two days never ends. And then there goes my sustainability. It's all gone. Then I have to literally restart the whole thing again to get back into schedule. So uh, what tips, I mean, most of it you've already shared, but what tips would you suggest, especially for someone who wants to do this on a long run, a long to continue run. to stay on a lifestyle change for a long run? I love it. See, anthropologically, we are all social animals. We work best when we're in a tribe. This is not a single person kind of a fight. It's very, very hard to keep your momentum and your motivation if you're alone on this road. You will not believe it. The first day I went cycling, uh, I, I taken uh, a big fat uh, mountain bike and somehow through grit, I did 60 kilometers and I came back. My friend, however, he said, I'm never coming cycling out with you again. But guess <laughs> what? This was about six months ago. Now we have seven cyclists. Beautiful. Everybody's bought cycles. Can you imagine on a Friday evening, we sit and Obviously, we're having a good time. But guess what we're talking about? We're talking about cycling. <laughs> nice. That's what, what a change from what we used to talk about. And so slowly, what started off as a one-person kind of a thing became a tribe. Now, all of us are holding each other accountable. Hey, we'll have to be there at 6 o'clock. Sharp 6 o'clock, everybody is there. Tires inflated. Check done. Water done. Electrolytes done. So you, if you put together a tribe, that's the best way for you to maintain momentum. Okay. Okay. So 
I have to go find these groups now. No? <laughs> if you don't have them in, in person, right? So what I happens? Don't, yeah. So this is this is there is something called the law of reticulation. Okay. If you're focused on one thing, right? I mean, in Hindi, you would say uh, "puri kainat" will send you signal, oh, yeah. whatever, right? <laughs> so, in psychological terms, it's called the law of reticulation. If you're intensely focused on one aspect, you will start noticing more of that all around you. For instance, number one. You will start following more Insta guys uh, uh, on fitness. You will yeah. start following more nutritional information. You will start reading about nutrition, and little by little, you will get curious about okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? Yeah, I you got me thinking. You yeah. got me thinking already. <laughs> and and you know that's another uh, very important aspect. P, thanks to me, now my wife has gotten onto the bandwagon. And thanks to thanks to both of us, our kids are he eating healthy. I mean, it's not like they don't get their you know junk and whatever, but they're right. also eating. They're also becoming mindful about the kind of food that's going into their into their bodies. And I think that's a very very valuable part of parenting. You know, uh, okay. while along with all the sugar laden stuff, this is also really healthy and uh, you know nice. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think my thing was I was doing it solo, right? Yeah. So. Getting a tribe always helps so much. It it becomes it becomes a partnership. It becomes an accountability. You're holding the other person accountable in a very nice way. I you see know, that. The yeah. best, best best advice I can give somebody is like you know you binge one week. Don't worry about it. Right. Don't, don't kick yourself. Don't be sad. We're very harsh with ourselves. You know we don't love oh. ourselves enough. We just like take fuck. And uh, you know you gotta say it's okay, man. Get off, you know, dust off your bum, and then walk. Continue. Um, yeah. So, so getting getting the tribe together is really important, and have the right kind of coaches working with you. The rapport, the knowledge, uh, is extremely important. And somebody who can push you, but from a good place. In a lot of these gyms, you have instructors yelling at you, or nutritionists, yeah. and you know. Make you feel a little oh, right, if you miss like one or two weeks of this thing. That really has to come in. Tough love with Anjali. Beautiful, love. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, um, for someone uh, who is a corporate uh, coach, I'm sure you have helped leaders, you know, in various fields try and crack down, you know, secrets of high performance, right? Uh, how do you see the relevance of structure? I mean, you kind of literally put that perspective there, but how do you see the relevance of a structured approach to therapeutic lifestyle intervention? Okay, um, for someone say who's seeking uh, you know superior results, or someone who's confused with uh, fat diets to you know therapeutic lifestyle interventions, what would you what would you let tell them? Great question. I can't say it better than uh, Sir Richard Branson, chairman of the, the Virgin Group. And one CEO asked him, how can I be more productive? Because at that level, right, you have to be insanely productive. You have to milk the most out of every day. And his advice was, you want to get more out of every day? Work out more. <laughs> it seems like such a contradiction in terms, but uh, Richard pretty much lives that kind of lifestyle. He's pushing himself, he's about 75 or 78 or whatever, and he continuously pushes himself physically, right? And he's saying, if you want to get better at work, if your cognitive skills need to get better, if your conflict management skills need to get better, if your ability to think critically without brain fog coming in, the right nutrition and workout is so important. I, I, I asked my coaches, can you imagine what's the transformation in me? I'm asking my coaches these days. I start the session with like, okay, how many push-ups can I do? Uh, what's your idea of what's your idea of fitness? Uh, right. if, if a 35 year old says, "Oh, I walk for 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the park," I very clearly tell them that's a that's a 70 year old person's uh, idea for workout. Yeah. You're 35. You know, you need to be able to do. You need to be able to get the blood pumping. You know, you need to you need to move. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I already want to hide my face somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but you, you know, because what happens, Samia, is uh, there is a certain element of uh, physicality in leadership. We, 
you know, the way you move, I teach a lot of executive presidents, I teach gravitas to senior leaders, the right. way you act, the way you behave when people, with people around you is a big part of what we call the, uh, the X factor or executive presence. But okay. before that, you need, the way you move conveys vigor, vitality. I once passed by Jitendra, the actor Jitendra about seven or eight years ago. He okay. ran up the stairs. He was 75 at that time. He just ran up the stairs. And I'm like, who the hell was that? And somebody said, Jitendra. <laughs> Okay. And, you know, that's, that's, that's inspiring. And listen, we are all going to get old. Very that's true. Right? I know. That's so true. Our idea is to how, how to grow old gracefully. You know, how, how to go with it as little pain as possible. I've seen my parents suffer. I've seen my in-laws uh, suffer. Um, okay. So it is a combination. Emotional health, physical health, spiritual health, mental health. It has... It has to be a combination of all of that. And the right kind of nutrition is very, very important. I've been shared this with uh, Regina, but according to ancient Hindu scriptures, you have three kinds of people, Rajasika, Tamasika, Sattvika. And okay. it almost boils down to the kind of food you consume is what will put you on these respective paths. And our idea of nutrition is really, really low. And which is where Invest on Health, health comes in and right. <laughs> yeah. our inputs. How's that for plugging? Good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And in fact, so beautifully said. I mean, uh, there are some ways that you have, I must say, you've tickled those thought processes for me, at least. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, it's so beautifully said. Thank uh, you so much. Coming down to the next, uh, next question, uh, you know, we do live in an era where everything is fast paced around us, right? Right. So there's someone, uh, there's always high pressure in performance, high pressure in trying to grow in your work, at home, everywhere, right? For someone who's grappling all these changes, uh, what would you say based on your, your experience now, how does, uh, you know, how does, or any, or if you can highlight the aspects how these can help, uh, you know, in your thinking process or your, say, in your food creativity or managing skills or cognitive skills. How do you, how do you, how do you say, or, or how do you highlight any aspects here? Okay. So I'm, I'm a very bad example uh, when it comes to the way I run my practice. I'm all about mindful behavior and my <laughs> consumption. So, but I know and, and, I, and I empathize with a lot of senior corporate leaders because I've been there, I've been in the trenches, blood, tears, sweat, soil. I know how their lives are. I used to travel like, uh, like a real, like a completely like a nomadic lifestyle. I used to eat all kinds of junk, you know, all of that. But okay. what I tell them is like, for a Ferrari to function like a Ferrari, you need your pit stops. If you don't have your pit stops, a Ferrari is no good, right? Your body is like that. Your leadership behavior is like that. Your contribution to the organization is like that. If you don't slow down at opportune levels, you might think you're doing a great favor to the world by rushing and hustle and bustle, but you're doing everybody a mistake, including starting with yourself. That's why the same in on, on flights, right? You know, in case of turbulence, put on your goddamn oxygen mask first. Mask first. Before I say somebody else. We all want to be, oh no, no, I can do more. I can do this also, I can do that also. You have to slow down and you have to treasure uh, your ability to intimately connect with your en environment. It could be food, it could be your loved ones, it could be nature. And I feel so happy when I see uh, you know pictures of Regina out in out in, you know, out in the open, right? Yes. All, all this is therapeutic in, in a way. It all, it all comes back to what you consider to be a good life. And slowing down is a very important aspect of uh, performing better. It's like this, right? You need great breaks to enable you to move faster. That's true. If there are no breaks, you will not go fast, right? Because you have the knowledge that you're able to self-soothe and self-comfort and take care of yourself, you can really function at a higher level. 
that's true so beautifully said jay and you've got me you've got me thinking in so many th in so many things that uh, yeah i will talk to you more on that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely here to help <laughs> and thank you so much jay uh, i think we pretty much uh, loved to hear about your experiences and uh, also you know we're happy to know that we were part of it we were able to help you and see some positive results as well. A big part, a big part of it. And uh, like I said, the journey is constant. But uh, with our well-meaning coaches around who can put you on the right path, uh, you know, I could, I probably would have landed here taking a lot more time. And Thank thanks you. to IOH, the, the journey is shortened. And uh, I'm happy to be a part of this journey. And That's it's amazing. beautiful. Thank you so much for having me, Samia. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences.